Hello, commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. As you can see, you can see me. <laughs> uh, after quite a long time, I've decided to uh, try bringing the camera back for a little while. I originally got rid of it because it was causing performance issues. Well, it wasn't causing performance issues with my game, but I was getting a serious lag and a problem with the voice sync up between the camera that you can see here and my voice. Um, it was most prevalent with uh, Call of the Wild because that's I think that's most my most graphically intensive game. But uh, for now, we're going to try it with the camera and see if maybe we can get back into using that. I feel like for most people, being able to see the face of the person that they're watching makes it feel a little bit more relatable. And uh, hopefully that'll help increase the quality of the uh, stuff that you have going on here. Uh, for those of you who are new to the series, uh, we went all the way out to Beagle Point. Uh, we're currently located right here next to Sagittarius A Star. We're at the station that's right next to that. We flew all the way out here to Beagle Point and have made our return trip back about halfway to the bubble over here. This is where we originally started. And for the rest of this trip, we just have to cover the last little bit of distance over here. I mean, it's not a little bit of a distance. As you can see, we still have 305 jumps just to get to this point right... Oop, if I can zoom back out. Just to get back to this point right uh, over here. So that's 305 jumps plus another probably 100 jumps between there, then and there. And we still need to stop along the way quite a lot to uh, gather up the exobiology that we need to finish making all the money that we need. Um, let's see, does the starport services <clears throat> show our current balance? Yeah. So as you can see, we have 5.9 billion credits. Uh, we've made almost all of that on this trip out to Beagle Point and back, just stopping and doing exobiology stuff along the way. So uh, really hoping that by the time we get back to the bubble, we'll have the 7 billion credits that I would personally like to have to get us to uh, being able to purchase a fleet carrier, get all the modules that I get. The, I only want a few modules, but to get the modules that I want to get and have enough of a buffer left over to pay for the fleet carrier for the foreseeable future. So that's the plan. Um, at this point, uh, we, uh, the last episode that we did, we finished up uh, selling off all of our data. And I guess now we're just kind of ready to go and uh, start our journey, start the last leg of our journey back to the bubble and to where we can go buy all of our fleet carrier stuff. So let's go ahead, hop out of here. I do have a topic of discussion for the day, as I always try to do. We're going to be talking about starting over, which seems a little bit appropriate for... <clears throat> uh, it seems kind of appropriate given the fact that... Uh, we're on our way back to the bubble, and that's going to involve, you know, kind of starting over again once we get there. And, uh, you know, so we get us into, try to, kind of try to get us into the mindset of, you know, we're starting the last leg of our journey. We'll be starting over with a new phase of the game when we get there, and uh, just kind of focus on that as a concept. So let me focus on actually getting our journey started here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll get moving. Uh, I know that I'm not lit up as much as... I probably should be, but uh, I don't like having a bright light in my face, so hopefully this is good enough. It'll give at least allow you to see me uh, talking and see my facial expressions, and hopefully that adds something to it. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, all right, so now we're focused on this. We're getting ready to jump. Uh, we'll be doing game stuff in the background, and I'll just talk about the topic as we go, as we normally do. Uh, so starting over, life almost never works out the way you wish that it would. Um, you know, you start out with these plans and you have these different things that you would like to do, but in reality, uh, life steps in the way, other people step in the way, circumstances step in the way, all these different things step in the way and prevent you from being able to do a lot of the things in your life that you thought you were going to do. Um, now, you can continue to persevere and try to make those things happen, and a lot of people find some level of success in doing that. But for uh, other people, the reality of the situation is that you end up losing everything that you had uh, because the things that come along wipe you out so incredibly uh, completely that you just, you're not able to keep going in the direction that you wanted to go. Uh, I've had that happen to me several times in my life. Um, a lot of it was self-inflicted, but other parts of it were just things that came along that made already frustrating situations m m frustrating to the m increasingly frustrating to the point that they just weren't worth, de worth dealing with anymore. So for me, um, for a long time, I struggled to I struggled to mesh my independent personality with living in a military situation. <laughs> uh, the Marine Corps and I just really did not mix very well. And the only thing that really made the Marine Corps bearable for me was the fact that I was doing music. And, you know, that that was the part that made it 
I was I was willing to put up with the Marine Corps side of things because I was getting paid to do music, and that was you know it was it was something that made it worth doing. All right, so hold on, we only have icy bodies and rocky ice worlds, so we're not gonna go, we're not gonna scan this here. We're really gonna be focusing on just trying to get as many of the 90 mil planets as we can find. Um, because, you know, we have 400-ish jumps to go until we get back to the bubble, and ideally we'll find enough enough decent planets between now and then to cover the rest of the money that we need. Um, so, you know, I was all... I, I re-enlisted twice, and both times were more or less reluctantly. The first time I re-enlisted because um, an opportunity came up for some leadership positions that I wanted to go for, and while I didn't necessarily want to stay, the opportunity was too good to pass up, and I stayed. And, you know, I was on track. Uh, by the end of that second enlistment to actually start, you know, getting towards what it was I was trying to get to, which was become a drum major, an actual drum major, not just an assistant. Um, and then by the time I got to the end of that enlistment, though, I was just I was really tired and frustrated and, you know, really didn't just really didn't want to deal with military culture anymore. Um, I was really frustrated with it. Uh, and, but and. I was, you know, I had, I, I was getting out. I had signed all of my paperwork. I was on terminal leave uh, in the process. Uh, I know I was like this close to being out. Uh, and then the promotion list came out for staff sergeant and I was on it. And I was like, I wasn't expecting that. And uh, the discussing the, discussing the situation with my wife at the time, we decided that it made sense for me to stay in. So I came back, <clears throat> uh, went to another duty station and was ready for another four years and I was planning on making it my career at the time but the longer I stayed in the more frustrated I became with just having to put up with my body deteriorating my my lack of feeling like I was doing something that I, that I still wanted to do my disenfranchisement with military music in general and just the military in general and you know I was just I was I started developing this leg problem that made it very difficult for me to run, and I didn't really like doing exercise anyway. You start adding in this leg problem that makes it even harder, and I was just, <clears throat> I was becoming very, very unable to just put up with it anymore. And so, you know, I was already mentally checked out by this point, and then the physical thing came along, it made it even harder, and at that point, I was just ready to be done. And I, when, when the doctors came back and told me that it was a serious problem with my legs, that I couldn't run anymore, and they could do some things, but it would leave me physically scarred and a bunch of other things. I just, I got to the point where I was just like, you know what, I, it, I don't want to do this anymore. And they offered me the option of a medical discharge. And at that point in time, it made a lot of sense to do that. And I don't regret that decision. Uh, but the reality is, is that <sighs> military music isn't really something that you can transfer to the outside world. It wasn't something that I could be like, all right, well, I'm going to take this this skill that I have and turn it into something that actually provides me with some kind of a reasonable career and, you know, can make me some decent money. Uh, you know, I, I, I was, I used to be good enough that I probably could have gotten into, you know, a symphony somewhere, but... I was kind of burned out on music at that point, and I didn't, I just, I didn't really want to continue playing the clarinet. I wanted to be more of in a leadership position, and with the way the education system works, most places aren't going to let you just step into a teaching role. They want you to go get, to go get schooling for it. And by that point, I was not interested in having to go to school for music anymore. I had already spent most of my life doing it, and the idea of having to go to school just to do, just to check some boxes to go get a teaching job, didn't appeal to me. And at the time, you know, and, and teaching isn't really something that is something that's going to lead you su to success. So my thought process was, I just, you know, I'm, 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 I'm ready to be, I'm ready to close the door on the music chapter of my life. And let's go try to find something else that maybe is going to provide me with the things that I need to get through this. Because I just, I think I was supposed to scan, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember that, what we did in the last one. There's only two bodies in this one, so there's no point in scanning here. Um... I was ready to move on to something else, but the problem is, is like I said, you, it's not unless and except for some very specific cases, there was no way for me to transfer that into a meaningful civilian career, and it's really frustrating to you know move on to something new and lose everything that you worked for for you know 11 years for me at that point, uh, 15 or 20 even. Well, what do you mean? High school, middle school, high school, co a year of college, 11 years in military. Yeah, probably closer to 20 years worth of, you know, I, I had been working in the music 
you know, doing music prof or working in music and half of that, at least half of that was professionally. Um, it's kind of frustrating to, you know, even though it was, I felt like at the time it was the right decision, it's still frustrating to throw that all away and lose everything that I had been working towards. Um, but sometimes that's just kind of the way it works. You have to take the opportunities that become available to you and the, the, the music opportunities I felt at the time had run out. And, you know, and now another 10 years later after all that had happened and I don't have, I haven't touched, a, you know, I haven't touched an instrument or done anything music related. Uh, it's a perishable skill and to get back to where I was would take years again. And I just, I just, I just, I've lost my interest in doing that. So, you know, you, you get out and you're kind of forced to try to do different stuff. You're forced to try something new. <clears throat> uh, for me, I didn't really do that. Um, I sought out office jobs that for the most part, I, I was wondering why I'm talking so loud. I'm sorry that I'm talking so loud. I'm trying to talk over my game. I didn't realize I had the volume on my my uh, audio turned up so loud. <laughs> I'm like, why am I? Why do I feel like I'm shouting into the microphone? I apologize for that. I'm, I'm sure that 11 minutes in, I probably lost a bunch of people because it was too loud. Um, I'll try to get better about that, uh, paying attention to the to the audio and all that. And, let me see. Let me see if maybe we get lucky and there's some biology on this one. High metal content planets with biology have a good chance of providing us with... Oh, it's a water world. Well, let's go scan that then. Since we have... I would think that a world with a water world in it would have some biology. You would think. You would think that that would be the case. But unfortunately, this game doesn't work like that. Uh -huh. All right, that's all the high metal content worlds. So let's go check out, let's go scan this water, this body of water, because that's still a decent amount of credits, and it's only, you know, 400 light seconds away. Oh, because my throttle's down. For some reason, when you have it at zero throttle, it, it continually wants to reset to zero. But if I have it at full throttle, I can set it wherever I want, and it almost never moves. Anyways... Um, I didn't end up trying to go for something really new, completely new. Um, for my entire time as a marine musician, one of my secondary jobs for most of that time was doing administrative work um, and doing office work, doing paperwork, doing all of that kind of stuff. And when I got out of the Marine Corps, I sought out jobs that were paperwork related. Um, you know, I was forced to try something new, but I didn't do something that was completely new. And I kind of regret that because when you're forced to do something new, you never really know what new doors might open for you um, by, you know, completely shifting direction and trying something different. Um, you never know what kind of success might be available to you if you just step out on a limb, take a risk and try to do something that's completely different than what you know. And it's really hard for most of us to really try to do something that's completely new because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what pitfalls are going to be there and you feel like you're going to struggle really hard to you know not not, not only step out and to do something that's different and it's probably it has a has a statistical likelihood of failing but then also just the fact that you your ignorance of the situation is going to make is going to cause you to make more mistakes than somebody who knows what they're doing and increase in, increase the likelihood that it's not going to work out for you um, but you know Sometimes in life, you end up being forced to try something new, and that's where I am right now. Um, I am personal. I personally never had any real interest in doing YouTube. Uh, it wasn't something like everybody thinks it's going to be cool. Like obviously, we, you think it's going to be cool to do content creation, make, make content creation your job, or whatever it is. Uh, I, I, th I don't think there's anybody who doesn't think that that would be something that's cool, but it wasn't something I necessarily was had any interest in pursuing. Um, for a couple of years, I had a channel and I was kind of playing around with it while I worked. It was just something I just I kind of did in spurts here and there because you know I, I figured why not? Might as well, might as well. If I'm gonna play, I might as well share it with people. Um, but it wasn't until I lost all of my income and all of my stuff that I decided that. You know, let's. I'm not able to do anything else anyway. I haven't been able to find a job. I've been like trying to make this. I've been trying to figure out how to do things and make things work, and it's just nothing's falling in place for me. So, I might as well try to do this YouTube thing full time and see where it goes. Um, and you know, I've had more success than I thought I was going to have. I I never thought I would ever even get monetized. Uh, 
And, you know, it finally, after, you know, it didn't even take me a year, really, of actually seriously trying to get to the point where I had enough subscribers that I could monetize my channel. Um, so, you know, it's, it's great when things like that happen, but at the same time, you know, it's also scary because you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and, you know, one of the reasons I decided to bring back the face cam is that, you know, maybe that's going to be something that helps my channel grow a little bit more. Uh, I've reached kind of a stagnation point and I'm kind of hoping, I'm, I'm kind of trying to think of different ways of making my channel a little bit more popular uh, without doing maybe some, are we on the, we're in Rocky Bodies, uh, without having to do, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be a trend chaser. I want to be somebody who you know puts myself out there, and hopefully enough people enjoy the content that I'm able to make a living at it. I don't need to be famous. I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be any of those things. I just want to be able to live a comfortable life, doing something that I enjoy doing. And video games is just something that I've always been uh, something I've always had uh, a sense of enjoyment in doing. And uh, so you know, I never really thought that YouTube was going to be something that I seriously pursued and uh, life just kind of railroaded me into it. And I'm hoping that it's gonna be something that's gonna bring it to where I have a different kind of success than I thought I was going to have maybe five, 10 years ago. I, you know, I always wanted to find a way to uh, you know, get some kind of a mobile income so I could go travel and do the different things that I wanna do, you know, travel in my RV that I'm sitting in right now, or you know, travel on a boat if I could figure out how to do that. Um, you know, I was always trying to find some kind of a remote job that would allow me to do that. That's way far away, and hopefully none of this high metal, uh, high metal signature content uh, contacts that I'm finding are in there. So no biological features there. No biological features there. There's only looks like there's only going to be one, maybe two more of these high metal content features planets, and they're probably in that other system over there because that's asteroids. All right, well, I guess we're just going to have to uh, avoid those or move on then. Uh, so, you know, YouTube, if it works out, and I'm still not convinced that it's going to, but I'm still trying because, you know, it's gone better than I thought it was going to. So who knows? Uh, but it's going to be a different kind of success. And I kind of want... I, did not, I did, didn't press the button. I kind of want to make that a... Even though it hasn't fully worked out for me yet, if it does... It's, it can serve as an example to others that maybe, you know, maybe you can achieve success. It just might not be in the avenue that you hope that it's going to be. Um, one of my favorite uh, sayings, and I think I've mentioned it in a recent video, is the idea that you can have anything that you want as long as you accept the idea that it's not going to be exactly the way that you want it to be. Um, I forget who said it. It was, I think it was a stand-up comedian, maybe Dave Chappelle. I don't, I don't remember who it was. But uh, you know, you, you you have to be willing to compromise on your dreams. You, it's it, your dream is almost certainly not going to be exactly what you think it's going to be. Um, <clears throat> like my my, I've I've mentioned it before that my dreams have changed over the years and my goals have changed over the years, and you know. Part of it is accepting less than what I originally wanted it, but a lot of it is just understanding that, you know, the things I originally wanted aren't necessarily things that I really care about. Um, what I really care about is getting freedom over my life, having the ability to live my life the way I want it, where I want to live it, how I want to live it, and, you know, have enough financial freedom to be able to do those things. And. I think if I think the more the more we move in that direction, rather than having these hyper specific dreams of how exactly how we want things to be, the, the easier it's going to be to uh, you know open yourself up to success and open yourself up to new possibilities. But at the same time, no matter how much you try to convince yourself of that, it's really hard to open yourself up to something that's new and different. Uh, we are not the kind of creatures that are really comfortable with things that are different. Um, Historically speaking and evolutionarily speaking, different usually meant dangerous. It usually meant, hey, something bad's going to happen. Some, some, there's a good chance that whatever this thing is that you don't understand already is a bad thing and it's going to hurt you. And so we are not predisposed towards being okay with different. We have to train ourselves to be open to new possibilities, to be open to something that's different, to accept the risk that comes with making yourself available for something that's different. Uh, because, you know... 
the, the sense of danger that you perceive when you try to do something different, that's not, that's not, that's not fake. That's not nothing. That, there is something there. There is a good chance that whatever new thing that you have no idea what you're doing is, is going to fail. And it might fail in a way that ruins your life. Uh, or that just seriously sets you back in a way that makes it very unlikely or even maybe even impossible to recover from. Um, that's a hard that's a hard thing to <laughs> even just saying it. That's a hard thing to come to grips with to accept. Uh, so you can see geological features up there in the top right. We're looking for biological and we want to find at least two of them. That gives us the best chance of finding stratum tectonicus on these high metal content planets. And I do want to thank my viewer. I think it was Macrush Lida who told me that the uh, the best chance to find that was on the high metal content planets. I think that's who it was. If not, please let me know in the comments and correct me. But uh, one of my viewers did point out that that was the best chance of finding uh, uh, the Stratum Tectonicus, where, where if you get first footfall, you get 90 million credits out of that. So that's good. Uh, it says that we have more, but I'm not seeing any other planets that are... Like, it's close. It's close, but it's all, it's all this stuff that's around it. So where, oh, uh, you know what? This might be one of those, we need to get the gas, we need to zoom in on a gas giant to be able to get the resolution we need to find what we're looking for here. Um, all right. Well, enough of that. We're just gonna move on. It's, when, it gets, when it gets finicky like that, I'm not interested in sticking around for that. Um, it's not unreasonable to be afraid of taking uh, of taking a chance on something because there's a reason why you're afraid. It's because there's a real danger there that something bad might happen. There's a real danger there that, you know, even if it's just the time that you put into it, you don't get your time back. We all have the same amount of time and time is the most valuable resource that we have. And if you commit to putting years of your life into something and it doesn't work out, you don't get those years back. You know, even if it's something as small as, you know, as not physically dangerous, but just as little bit of danger as that is, that is that's a meaningful risk that you're taking. Other risks are, you know, you could lose everything that you have because you put your you put your money, you put your savings or something into a business and it fails and you lose all of your money. And, you know, what do you do then? Now you're back at now you're back at zero. Uh, so, some risks might actually cause, you know, might actually cause you to be homeless or cause you to risk life and limb in something. I mean, there's risk. We, we fear risk for a reason. And it's not, there's, there's no, there's no shame in feeling fear of taking risks. But at the same time, um, history has shown us that fortune favors the bold. And when you take bigger and crazier risks, you have a much bigger chance of getting bigger and crazier rewards. And that's something that's really hard to, that's something that's really hard to parse because on the one hand, you know it's true. You know that, you know, you, you only get really big rewards if you take really big risks. That's just a fact. There's, there's no getting around that. That's not something that anybody can say is, is, a, is a falsehood. That is absolutely 100% true. But there's another part to that equation that most people don't talk about because we don't want to hear that part. And it's that the odds of you being one of the people who take the big crazy risk and actually get the big crazy reward is extremely small. <laughs> um, the number of people who go out and try to do something really amazing and awesome is much bigger than you think. But out of, the, out of those people that actually go and try to do something big and crazy like that, the ones who actually make it, extraordinarily small. Extraordinarily small. Most people spend their entire lives going after things and never make it. They just, they live their lives and they scrape by and that's the end of their story. Because there's only so much opportunity out there. And the people who have the best amount of preparation and are willing to take the risks and are willing to take the hard work have the best chance of getting it. But there's, the reality is, is that a lot of those, even if they have all of the preparation that they need and the opportunity comes along, that doesn't mean that they're going to make it. It doesn't, oh, so you got a single biology. We need to find uh, one that has two because that's almost certainly going to be just bacteria. So let's take a second and focus on this so we can see if maybe we'll get lucky and find a two biology high metal content planet because that means we can make an easy 90 mil. It doesn't look like this is going to be one. 
However, that being said, I do probably need to start landing here. So, uh, yeah, let's let's take this guy here. He's not that far away. Yeah, let's go ahead and land. We're already, we're almost at 25 minutes, and it takes a couple minutes to get down onto a planet. Oh wait, you know what? Um, is this the one that had the biology on it? Because we might as well get some. Uh, yeah. So that's probably it's, it's the only landable one, so it's got to be. Yeah. Okay. So we'll land on this planet. We'll grab some. Uh, we'll grab some bacterial samples and then call it a day. So let me get it lined up, and then we'll get full throttle so we can get there as quickly as we can. Um, yeah. <sighs> Most people don't think about that. They and the problem is, is that the people who make it, they have they have survivorship bias. They have this idea that because it worked out for them, it can work out for you, and that's not the way it works. It just doesn't. Now. Am I advocating that you shouldn't try? Mm, no, but having realistic expectations and being okay, having an acceptance that you can go for it, but it might not work out is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it might make you not try as hard because now you're like, well, the chances of me making it isn't very good, so why should I try very hard? I'll, I'll go for it, I guess. Uh, you know, it can dull your chance. It can reduce your chances because you have this self-fulfilling prophecy of you're not going to make it. That kind of sucks. But at the same time, if you truly believe that you're going to make it and you never do, at some point you're going to become jaded because you're going to believe that, you know, this should be happening for me. Why isn't it happening for me? What the hell, man? This should be happening for me. And you get to a point where you're just like, you, you, you don't care and you, you get you you get to a point where you really don't care anymore and you're not really not trying anymore and it's really not going to happen for you because you didn't manage your expectations properly so it's kind of a fine line that you have to walk um, I don't want to say that it's super negative to have realistic expectations about the things that you're trying to do with your life having goals and then understanding and knowing the chance knowing the true chances of that goal becoming a reality for you is not is not a bad thing to do. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. Because when you expect when you expect it to not work out and then it does, you're pleasantly surprised. If you expect it to work out and then it doesn't, it can be a soul-crushing experience that prevents you from trying anything new in the future. So it's it's like a it's like a it's like a really narrow cliff's edge to walk of, you know, managing your expectations, going for whatever it is that you're trying to go for and then if it works, great, and if it doesn't, hey, you know what? I didn't think it was going to work, but at least I tried it. I know that that's not going to work. Let me try something else. It's really hard, and that's a really hard mindset to maintain over any period of time, much less a lifetime of trying to try trying different things. Um, I can say that for myself, I really struggle with that. Uh, I, I definitely lean towards the negative way of thinking. <laughs> I struggle to, uh, I, I, I struggle to maintain that kind of mentality, but you know, it is what it is. That's more or less what I had to say about the topic of starting over. It's really frustrating to have to start over and lose everything that you worked for. And I personally have struggled a lot to, you know, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to start over anymore. I'm tired of starting over. I'm tired of having to go all the way back to the beginning and, you know, re, re like rebuild things over and over and over again, because it's happened at twice in a major way and even more than that in the various minor ways over my life but at the same time you know sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta <laughs> sometimes you gotta open yourself up to new possibilities and try something new and that's what this channel is for me um i don't personally believe that i have what it takes to build a channel that's something that people want to watch but i also didn't think i was going to build my channel to the point where, pe where i was actually getting paid to do this as minimal as it is, I'm still further along than I ever thought I could be. So who knows? Maybe I could build this into something. Maybe turning on the face cam is going to be a component into growing this into something that's better because people want to watch somebody. They want to. They want to see the person they're they're hearing. Don't know. I don't know what all the all the different things I need to do are. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, at this point, we need to focus on getting down to the planet, maybe finding some biology, and then closing out this video because we're already almost 30 minutes in. And I didn't expect it to actually take this long to get to the planet. But hopefully, if I don't see any biology really, really quickly, we'll just go ahead and be done. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about uh, getting bacteria because uh, it's the lowest. It's the for for the most part, unless you get a really rare one, it's the lowest paying ones. 
They don't really pay much more. I don't think they really even pay much more than what you would get out of maybe, say, the water world that we got. All right. Get our landing gear out so I don't accidentally have an accident of doing like 400 meters a second into the ground or something. Waiting on system resources to load. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're getting to the point where my camera is struggling because now it's having to load scenery. And it can't keep up. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and end it then. Uh, I'm going to need to work on figuring out how to make my camera not use up so many resources because this is... This is uh, unable. This is un unworkable to have my voice completely separated from the video. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at myself right now, and it's it's struggling really hard. So, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to click the like button if you did, so that the YouTube algorithm will know, and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing now, so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed, and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click the join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a membership, but would like to support the channel, you can always le uh, use YouTube's version of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions are greatly appreciated, and a critical component to helping to turn this channel into a full-time gig, which is the dream. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.